Hello, I'm ABX Toycat, and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk about the problems with paid skin packs for Minecraft Pocket Edition and Minecraft Console Edition. These are a form of DLC which has been around for quite some time, but that I think really come with a lot of big problems that I'm always kind of talking about when I hear skin packs being released. So I figured I'd get all my thoughts across in today's video and explain it to you all today. So please do a like if you do like it, because it helps out the channel a lot, and lets me want to see more stuff like this. But let's get straight into explaining why I think paid skin packs are a problem. So I want to just quickly start by saying I'm not so suggesting they should be removed now because obviously people have bought them and they don't want to lose access to their stuff and there shouldn't be you know a, a product that people have previously bought shouldn't just not be available to current people but I do think that they should be de-emphasized like I think you know it should be a rarer thing than they are right now and uh, the other forms of DLC are generally much better or you know no form of DLC at all but you know if they need to make DLC then I think other forms are much better but uh, yeah let's start by explaining why uh, skin packs are kind of an unfair proposition so the reasoning behind why I think that is because of the way they are packaged um, you know most people when they play Minecraft, they only ever use one skin. Uh, for me, for instance, I, I've used the Ocelot for the longest time. Sometimes I switch to the Ocelot in a suit, but even then, that's two suits over the past, like, two years combined. Most people are exactly the same. If you're called, like, the gaming zebra, you'll be a zebra skin. If you want to, you know, look kind of like, uh, you know, Darth Vader, you can be the Darth Vader skin. But most people kind of tie their Minecraft identity to their skin. So, yeah, most people use one skin. I use two, but I, I think, you know, most people use a very uh, small amount. And how much would one skin be worth, you know, just that one big pixel? I think most people would say something like five cents, ten cents, something like that. Like, is one skin even worth something? Uh, you know, that's basically the idea right there. They're, they're, they're worth kind of not too much by themselves, even if, you know, you have an artist going in there and making it. It's still, you know, may worth maybe like 20 cents, 30 cents, which makes it seem like a really good deal when they bundle 10 skins for a dollar or 20 skins for two dollar. But the way that that actually, you know, happens to people is it means that you're kind of forced to buy a bunch of skins you don't want to buy. Uh, because uh, let's go over the two dollars for 20 example. That seems like a good value skin if you think, you know, they're all designed by an art team, which means that, you know, they're worth like 20 cents each. That's amazing value. But the problem is, it's not amazing value because you're forced to buy 19 skins you just don't want for the one skin you do. Um, I don't know which skin pack the uh, Ocelot's in, but I think it's skin pack five. I have never used any of those other skins ever. They're just, you know, I, I basically spent $2 to get that Ocelot skin. And to me, that's where the real problem with skin packs come. They're bundled in, uh, you know, such a way because they can't be sold individually. Like, you know, have, having a 10 cents microtransaction, I don't know if they're even allowed that on the consoles of the Pocket Edition, uh, but you know, the big problem with having them in a bunch of 10 is it means you're forced to buy into their bundling system, or you know, let's go a 20 pack example, most people aren't going to use all 20 of those skins, in fact I'd say pretty much no one ever has used all 20 skins from a skin pack, and the vast, vast majority of people have never used more than like a 10th, and this means that the vast majority of people are buying a bunch of stuff they don't want to buy just to buy the stuff that they do want to buy, and this gets even worse, because if you do want to have 10 or 20 different skins, which is what they're clearly catering for, you might not necessarily even get them in the same skin pack. In fact, odds are you won't. If you want Luke Skywalker and Ocelot and, um, you know, uh, you want a Mushroom Suit too, you, you won't get them all in the same skin pack. You'll have to buy three separate skin packs. If you want ten separate skins, it might cost you $20 to get, you know, all the skin packs you need for it. And that's where, to me, there, uh, you know, comes a problem. It, it, it's like, a, it's a product aimed at people that want a specific set of skins from one group, but yet the reality is most people don't want that specific thing and they're buying it for an entirely different use. And I think, you know, when the product doesn't match up with what people want, but it's the only choice, I think that's not necessarily the greatest of markets. And that's why I think that, you know, the way the skin pack system works right now is not the best thing in the world. Uh, however, you might be able to argue, okay, then Toy Cat, I mean, it sucks, but it's a choice, right? You don't have to buy any skin packs. And that is entirely true. I think it's cool that they're entirely cosmetic. Even the skins that change your looks still have the normal hitbox to make it fair. But yeah, at some point, it's not truly a choice, uh, you know, not to have it. Because you can be Steve entirely as an option. It's not going to affect your gameplay experience. Experience. But if you want to play with friends, you know, just being Steve means that, you know, if there's two Steves, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just this Steve. And although I think it's nice that they've been increasing the number of free skins, I think that's great on both the console edition and the pocket edition. I think when you look at what the free skins are, it kind of proves my point as to, you know, they might just know exactly what's going on. Because in general, the free skins in a skin pack are the ones that aren't going to be as popular. Stuff like, uh, you know, the maid from a skin pack will be, uh, you know, oh, a free one. But if you want to be this cool thing, it's that. And I think this represents the real problem with it. And that is them having an interest in, you know, making it so you have as few free skins as possible so that you need to buy these skin packs because, you know, like it or not, these are a good source of revenue for them. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers on console sales of skin packs or on Pocket Edition, but I do know that, you know, uh, the first skin pack was rumored to sell a million copies, even if it didn't, because that's a massive amount. Even if we've sold just a million copies of all skin packs combined, that's still at $2 a pop, 2 million. And, you know, that's a lot of money to just have to throw away. And it means that the Pocket Edition has no incentive to work on the skin feature anymore, no reason to, you know, integrate the 
PC system onto the, you know, into the into the game. And the console edition has a no- negative incentive, like the exact opposite of an incentive to put custom skins in the game. And although they've said it's for copyright reasons, they don't want to do it. The reality is, other games do allow you to make your own custom skins, and it's not the game developer at fault. And this means that the console edition is in this really tricky place where it's like, well, we could make this thing that lots of people do want, but it literally loses us a massive amount of money. Like I said, even if you just assume a million sales across all skin packs, which given that there's like 20 million copies of Minecraft console, isn't entirely ridiculous to think. I'd say like 5 million is probably more likely, but that's a lot of money to have to throw away. And who's going to buy a skin pack if there are free options? Some people will, but you know, not as many people. And that's the real issue here. I think it gives the console edition developers and the pocket edition developers just a big negative incentive to work on cool features for the users. And I think that's a real problem. So what is the solution? Because I don't want to just, you know, name pro- uh, problems. That's not really too useful. Just saying, oh, this sucks. Isn't a good thing. I think the easy solution to this is to just give people more choice. Like I said, the big problem for me is that you have to buy a bunch of skins you don't want to buy a skin that you do, or sometimes a few skins that you do. And there's an easy way to fix that. First of all, just be like, okay, then we're just going to make a buy it all option. So you pay $5 instead of 2 or $1, but then you get access to every single skin. This might not work for licensed skins, like, you know, with the Sky Wars and the Simpsons and stuff, but, you know, just make it so there's a bunch of skins that might not necessarily have to be licensed, and then, boom, you pay $5, you have access to them all. They slowly increase, uh, you know, add more to that. That'd be pretty cool. I think that would mean that everyone can have access to all the skins, and it kind of makes a more PC-like system, except arguably better, because everyone has access to, like, 200, 300 skins. They probably won't, they're not going to use, you know, 280 of them, but if they want to use them, they can. I think that'd be cool, but that might be asking too much. Maybe they'd have to make it $20 because of all the rights holders, and that wouldn't be too great. So the other option I'd like to suggest here is that you should be able to just pay $1, and it'll be like, buy your own set of 10 skins, and there's like 300 skins, you slowly go through and buy them all. That would be a mess to buy from the UI front, but I think as far as, you know, on the end user front, it'd be the best way to do it. Uh, most people would only want 10 skins, and although, again, that would suck as far as finances go, if if people want 10 skins, uh, and they're willing to pick the 10 skins they want, isn't it fair that you should sell them to them, rather than saying, nope, you have to buy this from this pack, this from this pack, and this from this pack. To me, it seems that way, but maybe I'm entirely wrong here. I'd love to know what your opinion is in the comment section down below, and otherwise, I'd very much appreciate a like on the video if you did like it, because it helps out the channel a lot, and lets me know you do like it. Share if you really liked it, and subscribe if you're new around here. I make videos like this every single day on my channel, and if subscribed, you'll see them all daily on your homepage. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and goodbye.